For In Motion, I'm Kurt Parker. It sits quietly on a granite slab at the crossroads of foot traffic on the first floor of McAllister Building. Spanning six feet in every direction, many would agree that it is quite the majestic sight. This piece of art, called the Octocube, is the handiwork of Dr. Adrian Akneanu, and while some would view this as just a work of art, Dr. Akneanu sees it as more. The sculpture is a representation, like a map, of the surface of a four-dimensional uh, object, of a four-dimensional regular solids. Until recently, there are no good methods to uh, represent uh, four-dimensional bodies, and this is uh, probably the first good way to do it, uh, either in a virtual form or, uh, or as a solid object. When we speak of dimensions, we usually talk in terms of length, width, and depth, those being the parameters for the three dimensions. In mathematics, a shape can be plotted on a grid where x is the horizontal and y is the vertical. Geometric shapes can be plotted by formulas that are applied to this grid. Say, for instance, we plot x squared plus y squared equals 1 you'll end with a circle. If we add another dimension or plane to our grid, we now have depth. When we add the new dimension to our equation, we get this. x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1. And that is what we call a sphere, a three-dimensional object, represented in a two-dimensional space. To go one step further, what if we added another plane? Most would say that's impossible because we visually perceive in three dimensions. So to start, we must understand that the fourth dimension is a purely hypothetical undertaking. Just as we added a plane when we took our two-dimensional object to three dimensions, for the sake of abstract thinking, why not add another? Uh, just like the Earth, which is a three-dimensional body, has a two-dimensional surface which we can map in an atlas on sheets, which are two-dimensional sheets, uh, we can try to do the same from uh, four dimensions to our three-dimensional space. So we can take uh, the surface of a four-dimensional body, this surface is three-dimensional, and uh, we can uh, try to map it. Now a good map is a map of a sphere, just like a map of the Earth. And in fact, if you want to map the whole Earth, uh, the way you can do it is to put a light bulb at the North Pole and project the whole surface on the floor. By shining a hypothetical light from the North Pole of our hypothetical object, a shadow or projection is created that can be plotted mathematically. Dr. Akneanu then took his plot and sought to build a representation of the four-dimensional object in a three-dimensional world. Well, I had quite a while ago... Um, wire models of, uh, of uh, four-dimensional bodies, but um, the problem with those was that you couldn't see the rooms. So it's, the work on this started really when I, uh, when I realized that, uh, that you could uh, make the, the walls, these windowed walls, and moreover that uh, there was a way using a computer to um, open the walls of uh, such a room up and give a cutting pattern for the wall. So I wrote the software for this and then uh, with it I made a cardboard model about a year ago and I started to look for a place to have it made. And uh, one day I met a neighbor who's an uh, airspace engineer and I asked him where do they make their uh, flying objects because uh, somehow these curved surfaces suggested a wing of an airplane. And uh, he told me about uh, a great uh, engineering shop that we have on campus. And uh, people there were uh, very enthusiastic and extremely competent. So uh, they were really artists in steel and they worked for almost one year to put it together. 
This mathematical work of art will also serve as a teaching tool to encourage students to think past the constraints of the world around us. If you get the time, visit the OctaCube on First Floor McAllister Building for a peek into the fourth dimension. For In Motion, I'm Kurt Parker.